Hello YouTube, it's me, Teddy, and today we have a very interesting character to redesign. And redesign I did because she's kind of unrecognizable. For this episode of my hypothetical Winx Club reboot, we have the mysterious former crown princess of Domino, Daphne. Long ago, in the thick snow-covered forests north of Arachleon, there was once a powerful kingdom called Domino. The capital city was nestled deep in the mountains of this region, and this was where most of the kingdom's citizens called home. Because beyond this massive main city, the environment was brutal. Steep cliffs along the mountainside, frequent snowstorms, and strange, dangerous creatures lurking behind huge tree trunks. If you've ever experienced a bad winter in upstate New York, it's kind of like that, just most of the year. This harsh climate wasn't of much concern to the people of Domino, though, as it never quite seemed to reach their capital city. In Daphne's day, most believed this to be because of the way the mountains were situated, somehow. However, the heart of the city was actually home to a massive hearth with a flame that no one in the kingdom could recall ever going out. And that's because, in the entirety of Domino's history, it never had. It was no ordinary flame that burned in that hearth. It was a piece of the dragon's flame gifted from the mother dragon herself to the founder of the kingdom almost a thousand years before. I'll summarize their legend as we have a lot to talk about today. Once, there was a young woman, a member of a respected Iraqlian family, who had finally had enough of the abuse she suffered in her household, and taking only what she could carry, she fled into the night. She left everything behind that day and became somewhat of a nomad, never staying in one place for very long, but sometimes she would leave having added a new member to her party. Wanting to give her new friends a safe home, she sought out the great cosmic dragon and the guardian fairy of her flame for advice. This guardian fairy had lived a long life and never taken an apprentice, but upon meeting this young woman, she realized that the next wielder of the flame had come to her. But the girl was set on completing her quest and finding a new home, and so, after only a year of training with her new mentor, she was gifted a piece of dragon flame directly from the mother dragon herself, and she used it to keep her new found family warm in the harsh cold they settled in. And so, the kingdom of Domino was founded. The kingdom had a very strong appreciation of friendship and community and love and kindness, with several national holidays throughout the year to celebrate them. This aspect of their culture was very different from Arachleon, which, even to the modern day, is a much more stoic nation, focusing on the individual rather than the community. Domino, in my rewrite, would have some inspiration from real-world ancient cultures, like Scandinavia and Rome, with the former's cuisine and fishing industry, and the latter's advanced architecture and appreciation for the arts. Daphne's body type is also supposed to evoke the depictions of Greek and Roman goddesses. I wanted her to have softer features and be a little squishy. As crown princess, Daphne made frequent public appearances. She was a beloved celebrity to her people in a similar way that Stella is in modern-day Solaria. This is something she enjoyed a lot, too, and Daphne was the kind of person that could make friends with just about anyone. She also had a lot in common with her sister, actually, like enjoying art and fiction and learning little fun facts about things. And Daphne's also pretty impulsive, too. She's just less of a hothead and more of an airhead. As Princess of Domino, she had lived a very privileged, comfortable life, never having any real responsibilities or knowing any real strife. I wanted her casual outfit to be flowy and simple to reflect how relaxed her day-to-day -day would be. I also did borrow her color palette from the later seasons when they give her her original body back. God, that outfit really, really is something. Daphne was also great with kids. I mean, of course, right? You would expect the fairy of youth to be great with kids. <laughs> and when she found out her mom was pregnant, she was absolutely thrilled to be a big sister. Bloom was born when Daphne was 17, 
and she was immediately her sister's favorite thing in the whole of magics. Then, a few months later, the war started. The world wasn't ready for what the ancestral witches had in store. They were an incredibly powerful force and had amassed a dark army in secret for years. Daphne had only ever known her country of peace and love, and she never really expected that to change. She was naive, and very wrong. Her princess training had covered some aspects of war and military, but actually seeing soldiers mobilized was something else entirely. Daphne had gone from tea time in the royal garden to sitting in on war meetings. She was terrified, but her love for her people and her sense of duty to them motivated her to push herself to adapt as best as she could. In the span of only a few months, Daphne's entire life was turned upside down. In the very early days of the war, Daphne's parents, King Oratel and Queen Marion, organized the members of the Company of Light to fight back against the witches. This ancient society was made up of some of the most powerful magic users, political rulers, and decorated warriors in the whole world. Some of them even helped with Daphne's fairy training, which was now kind of an express curriculum and taught within the castle. She had hoped to go to Althea, but that option wasn't really on the table at this point. Unfortunately, the witches and their army were overpowering the company's best efforts at defense. And when word arrived that a special elite squad was headed for Domino's royal castle, they went into lockdown. Daphne and her parents watched as fighting raged on their doorstep, but her father couldn't stand to hide while his soldiers fell to protect him. After giving his wife and daughter a tight hug, he ran into the fray, with Marion calling after him and trying to reach his side. Daphne watched in horror as they were both caught up in the battle. As the door slammed back shut, she ran to the nursery to try and escape with her baby sister. But as she reached the crib, she heard a man chuckle from across the room. Looking up, she saw in the shadows a well-dressed young man with long hair, sitting relaxed in an armchair. For a moment, she was frozen. Take a seat, he told her in a deep, calm voice. The war will be over soon. It was almost friendly, his tone, and yet his words sent a chill down her spine. She grabbed Bloom and made a break for it, tearing down the darkened halls as fast as her wings could take her. There was fighting outside every exit. Realizing she wouldn't be able to escape, Daphne looked down at the baby in her arms, seeing the trust in her sister's eyes, and her heart broke. In that moment, all she could think about was saving her sister, and... As emotions rushed through her, she remembered stories of magic's sister planet, Earth. A place with no magic at all. No evil witches, no terrifying wizard on their heels. And summoning every last ounce of magic in her, drawing strength from the thought of her sister getting to experience her youth, she managed to make a small portal. Placing a gentle kiss on her little forehead, Daphne whispered to her sister, I love you. Please be safe. And with a soft smile, she set her sister into the portal, with it closing behind her. This is a split-second decision, and would be way cooler in animated form. Basically, how Daphne manages to do this is like how people lift cars off their kids. The magical equivalent to pure adrenaline coursing through her. Also, probably regular adrenaline, too. The moment after... The man comes upon the scene. Needless to say, he is furious that he lost the dragon flame, and Daphne doesn't survive his rage. The royal family is gone, and for good measure, he extinguishes the mighty fire in the sacred hearth, ensuring any survivors are faced with the brutal winter cold. The kingdom of Domino has fallen. Now, let's talk about Daphne the nymph. Unfortunately, I lost some of the footage, so I'll do like a slow reveal at the end. I'm so sorry. Um, but okay, so a lot of her appearances in the story would be pretty similar to the original show. She's ethereal, cryptic, and she wants to help Bloom remember her past. 
For over 200 years, she has existed at the bottom of a lake, only occasionally speaking to other nymphs or dreamwalking looking for her sister. Also, all around her lake would be storks. They would be her symbol, like how Hera has peacocks. And I wanted her nymph form to look like an ancient uh, bronze statue from Greece or Rome. As far as I know, and I did a lot of research for this video, um, the show doesn't really give us a great starting point for what a nymph really is. Um, so I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with nymphs for a long time. Like, in the show, is it an advanced fairy form? Is, like, the original Daphne supposed to be fully dead? Is her nymph form the result of a corrupted Sirenix transformation that didn't kill her but simply separated her soul from her body? We just don't know! But what I decided on is this. A magic's nymph is a fairy who has devoted themselves so strongly to their magic that their spirit transcends their physical body and they become one with the magic that flows through the planet. A prerequisite to this incredibly rare transformation is the death of said fairy. Subsequent to this death, the original source of their power is shed and returns to the world to later be inherited by a new fairy. A nymph cannot be killed. However, they are also not very effective when it comes to combat. As their non-physical state and ability to dreamwalk suggest, they are most useful as spirit guides. However, a nymph can be made physical through an incredibly complex, time-intensive, and magically advanced ritual. This ritual must be done by a very powerful magic wielder and the nymph themselves. A corporeal nymph is not an enemy one would want to have. However, in this state, the nymph can be killed. Maybe you've guessed it, but this happens to Daphne. When I was deciding what I was going to do for Daphne, I did take some inspiration from Rose Quartz from Steven Universe. She wouldn't have done the terrible things that Rose did, but she would be someone who wasn't mentally mature enough for the power and position they held. Like, Daphne wasn't exactly good at being a nymph. Um, the other six kind of looked down on her. They all died old, wise, and very powerful, and they honestly hardly meddle with humans outside of a few dreams for fun. And when Daphne gives Bloom advice, a lot of times it's not even that helpful because it's so hard to understand, it's so cryptic. And when it comes to how she feels about being a nymph, Daphne honestly feels kind of guilty about it. She doesn't think that she's earned the position of respect that she has. I think that she truly would want to be made corporeal again. But then in the short time that she is, she would find herself unable to deal with living around people. She can never be that happy-go-lucky girl she was before, even if now she looks like her again. And this is something I think the show would really benefit from spending time dealing with. Then, in the final battle against our big bad, she would sacrifice herself to kill him. It wouldn't work. He would only be greatly weakened, but she would lose her life for the final time. Daphne's story is tragic. <laughs> Despite being the fairy of youth, she had hers taken from her so suddenly. But in the end, she managed to save her baby sister's life twice. I really hope all of this made sense and felt like a good use of the incredible lore and story potential that is Daphne of Domino. She's such a cool character that, in my opinion, never really got the spotlight she should have. I don't plan on ever watching past season 4, but I have seen clips and read the wiki and I personally don't like how they brought her back. The wedding thing is so weird. I do like Elizabeth Gillies as a voice actor for her though, I love Elizabeth Gillies and I think she did a really good job. But for my reboot, as Fairy of Youth, her story is about going from a carefree, childish life to being the mother figure protecting others. Maybe she can have a little fling with Thorin while she's corporeal again, but unfortunately the story demands that she is doomed. But if you're wondering what happens to modern day Domino and who would lead it, I do have some ideas which would involve an original character, so let me know if you'd be interested in that or if you want me to stick more to characters that actually exist in the show. 
until then, stay tuned. There's lots more coming. The tricks will be up next, and I'm almost done with the map video. So thanks. See you guys then. Bye.